tai here te po tai here te ao ti toko te ao mara mati he mauri ora. Te na koutou, koutou rā e whakarongo mai nei, te tiro mai nei, ki tēnei kaupapa, e hā ngai puana ki ngā i ngā whenua, ngā i ngā wāhi, o taku rohe. Nō reira nau mai. Kia ora and welcome. Uh, welcome to the stories of my rohe, uh, this part of the country of Maniopoto, of the rohe pōtai, the king country. Te nā koutou. Uh, kia ora Shane, uh, thank you so much for welcoming us here to Te Kōpua, such an awesome little spot you've got here for this marae. Shane, you're from this area, this is your rohe, and by that nature you're connected to this place, but connections go beyond just being from an area, and given that you're an historian and you know a lot about this place and the names behind those places, learning about that sort of thing can connect people more to an area, can't it? Absolutely. And uh, by definition, I suppose, I'm tangata whenua. Mm. And tangata literally meaning uh, person or people, whenua meaning land. Mm. So connected directly to the land. And that connection uh, goes further than that. You know, it's in our bones, it's in our DNA. Literally, my bones lie in the land, my mm. ancestors. Mm. Uh, all the places that are around us all hold memories. And right. so the land literally speaks to us. And so the names that we have of, of places uh, all about here uh, offer to us glimpses into the past and teach us who we are. And there are stories uh, and layers of stories upon the land here and the rivers and all the, the geographic features. There's lots of different ways Māori named places. What were some of the key key reasons behind place names? Some of the place names were named for uh, other parts of the country. You know, you'd, you'd see a particular mountain and they gave you memories of a place that you'd just come from, so that might be named after that. So you took a little bit of home with you mm. and brought it to a new place. Other places were named because um, they were a way of remembering an event. Uh, a gathering, perhaps war, um, feasts, any number of things might be remembered just in a name. Here, uh, this little place here is known as Matakaro, and from what we can gather and remember, that this was a place where bullets were turned away. Mm. Mata meaning bullet, karo meaning to deflect. And we know that um, our relations here, or my ancestors here, were... Uh, part of a following called Ho Ho, in which they had powers to deflect, superpowers to deflect bullets and other things. I like that story. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and, and place names can also be kind of form an oral map as well. Absolutely. Uh, so, an oral map, being in, from an oral culture, we would often sing our travels. Mm. And so singing our travels through what we call pātere, or chants, we would lay out the features of our land, uh, and they would be prominent. And even in, in lullabies, we might tell the child uh, to, through the song, to follow a particular pathway across the land. So all of the land features mm. to which that child belonged, and its whakapapa belonged, its connections belonged, would be articulated, would be sung about. So maps are um, not just visual, mm. but they also can be, for us, they can be sung and remembered that way. Nice. Well, kia ora, Shane. We're really looking forward to um, having a little uh, hikoi around the rohe and learning a bit more about this place and some of the names. Kia ora. Great. Kia ora.